Welcome back to Sheena Power Talk Youth Link. And you already know it's where our redeemed, revived, and transformed guests get real and empowering the youth. This is episode 10. And with me, my God, with me is who you asked for. You asked for her. You have gotten her. It's Minister Evangelist Money Trout. And listen to me. It now go down good today. Come let me tell you something. Your soul will be edified. God will be glorified and Satan in a hell right now. I trim because I'm terrified. Now, sister, I'm so happy to have you. Thank you so much for joining us back. I love you. It's good to see you guys. Good to see coming. you too. <laughs> Thank you oh so much God. for having me. Oh Thank God. you so much for having Sis, me, sister. Welcome back again. Sister, I just want you to look into the camera. One minute. Tell the viewing audience who Monique really is. Bless you, people of God. So, Monique is a woman that has been transformed, saved by God. You know, the Lord has dealt with me bountifully. The Lord has changed my life completely, changed my story, changed my character, changed my countenance, changed everything about me. And so, when I look at Monique today, I don't see the girl I used to be. I see a woman that is powered by God, empowered by the Holy Spirit of God, transformed by God, ready to do great work in in the kingdom of God. God bless you. Hallelujah. That is so powerful, sister. You know, we already believe in the Bible and the Bible is the foundation of truth. Amen. So what is your favorite scripture and what it means to you? My favorite scripture is Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. And why I love that scripture? Because oftentimes as people, as a people, not even categorizing Christians, but as a people, we have aim, we have goal, we have things that we want to accomplish in life. We have things that we want because we have ambition right and so that scripture tells me that everything that i need is in god it is upon seeking the kingdom of god it's it, it's when i when i chase after god actively pursuing god that's when i get everything that i need the bible says seek ye first the kingdom of god so when i seek god i don't have to seek the things that i need because everything that i need is tied up in him so when i seek god and his kingdom everything that i desire everything that i want is in god Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. No, sister, you're going to touch on a very important topic. But before that, I know you have a very powerful testimony. Amen. And, 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 and the thing is, I want you all to understand, this is not strangers coming together. This is my sister. Amen. This is someone Covenant that sister. knows me. Amen. This is someone that even when I was not saved, she got saved before me. I would go to her and I would say, I would inbox her and I'd say to her, please pray for me. I know I need to be changed, but I can't find myself to do it. And it's so good that she always had me in her prayer and we are coming far from so far from the same lifestyle i sit here with no stranger so as i know a little more about you money can you just tell the viewing audience your testimony get real with us all right so it's a journey you know people of god but may i tell you when the, when the song i say a mighty long way look where you brought me from a mighty long way it has been a journey um at the age of eight nine thereabouts i was molested by a family friend which is a female and she did some stuff to me and i remember distinctly while she was you know molesting me i remember she said to me i remember she kept saying to me don't tell nobody you know don't tell nobody about it don't tell nobody about it and of course as i said before it's a family friend so it wasn't a stranger of course then i'm a child but i knew within myself that what she was doing was wrong i could understand why she was doing it to me but i knew it was wrong so of course i never said anything to anybody Growing up, I found myself liking girls, not understanding why. Why am I saying so? Why am I with a friend? I'm like boys and me like girls and me. I admire girls and, you know, and all of that. And it just so happened that the same thing that she did to me, I then went on to do it with other girls, you know, friends that, that, that we go to school together and stuff like that. Until it got so bad. I mean, it wasn't a secret lifestyle anymore. It was something that coming up to the age of 16, 17, thereabout, I was, you know, very outgoing. I was bold with it you know i'm like this is what it is because i've accepted it that a woman my love man i love man man i have no desire for man and i could not understand why it wasn't until i got saved the lord told me that this was a seed that was planted but before i got before i get there so i was living a lifestyle where i was in and out of the strip club man i know it's strip club at jamaica man i go i would work my money work my money and take my money and go at the strip club and i put in a woman panty i'm telling you and so i was in that lifestyle so deep to the point where th that lifestyle is a very expensive lifestyle i will, could i couldn't maintain it and so what i had to do then was get a man 
you know, a sugar daddy, as they will say, a sugar daddy to fund the lifestyle because I could uh, maintain it on my own. My little salary could, uh, you know, it, it just could uh, take care of the, the, the lifestyle that I wanted to live. And so I was with this old man. Um, I remember being age 19 thereabout. I met him at age 15, but we weren't involved until about age 19 thereabout. And he's a Jamaican, but he lived in Canada and he had a lot of money and stuff. And so he loved me so much. He would have just left me for just collect him rent and stuff like that. So I had access to a lot of things that, 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 that brought me, you know, to meet a lot of people um, in that community, the LGBT community. So I wouldn't go to straight party, Muna wanna man, Muna wanna. we just have the sugar daddy there. You know, we weren't having intercourse, but he was just there funding my lifestyle and stuff like that. And I remember stop dating, you know, feminine girls and want to, you know, take it to another level, start talking to Butch, the one and we're just like, man, come here, say a real relationship, this now, live together and everything. But let me tell you something, the things that I used to do, sometimes it was just the other day I was in my house and I was thinking, I mean, I said, God, you really do a work in Amina, like even if no one else believes, say God can change them life. Me believe because I see where your camera from, God, like my, my intentions, my motive was so messed up. I was so doubled in sin. I used the only thing whenever I do I take coke. Me used to drink liquor, me used to smoke. I remember at one point in time, because I was so in and out at the strip club, me never even have to pay for going. The people them know me so well. I remember meeting this man who was a drug dealer. And him said, since you have access to the strippers and stuff like that, I can give you some ecstasy to sell. I mean, I said, sell ecstasy. I don't really want to get in at that. And I took them from the man. I took a, like a Ziploc bag full of ecstasy to sell to the strippers. And for some reason, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. And so... You know, I was just deep in sin, doing threesome, orgies, everything you can think of. When you come on my house and look, you see homosexual, like, like the whole of the LGBT community basically live at my house. I remember living in an apartment in Avondale. We got um, um, evicted from the apartment because the, the landlord was saying, this is not the normal place. And then baby, you want to walk with, you have to leave, you have to leave. I remember being in a house one particular night. I think it was six of us as, as, as women. And, and we, we, we were having orgies and stuff like that. And one of the ladies that were there, she wasn't um, a lesbian. And I remember she said, I'm not going to stay here tonight because you know, I don't want to know to do nothing. So the light wasn't at the house. And I remember she leaving that particular night. Upon she leaving, she went in the other room look, looking for clothes to leave, light a candle and leave the candle on. And that candle burned down. And somehow the place, the front of the, the front room, um, catch a fire. We were in the other room all the way to the back. I think it was five of us and a big king size bed. And one of the ladies woke up and said, the place I burned on, the place I burned on. Where I look for the key, could have find a key for come up me. I tell her, said, the wall of the room, at the front of the room, I burned out. The night before that, I remember about three weeks before that, I met a pastor man. He lived on the other street. And he stopped me one night and he said to me, are you saved? And I said, no, he said, no, you're not saved, but the Lord wants to save you. And, you know, because of the upbringing that I had with my grandmother, you know, she, she, she taught me the ways of the Lord. So, you know, I was, I was, I wasn't far from God. I knew God, I, I knew how to pray and all of that, but I wasn't safe. And I could not understand why I wanted to live a certain life, but I can't do it because a woman, my woman, what a desire they come from, I don't know, I just know, say, you know, there's something on the inside of me is telling me to do this, to do this. And I could have helped myself, I could have helped myself. And so my grandmother taught me the ways of the Lord. So I knew God and I knew that he, you know, was able to change me. I just didn't know how. And so when the pastor said to me that the Lord wants to change you, the Lord wants to save your life, and he asked me where I was living, and I, he came there one particular evening, and he said to me, I'm going to invite you to church. And he kept inviting me. Every Sunday, I said, I'm going to carry it. He said, since you're not come, can I carry the church to you? And he came with a few of his members from church. And I remember the, it was a Friday night. We were all in the living room, and he was praying for all of us, six of us there. And he, were praying, he was praying for all all of us and I remember we were there crying away. I said, We don't know how we start live them life, and this is not how the Lord wants us to live. I was start looking at ourselves, you know. I do an introspection and I said, God, I really have a change. And I remember crying the Sunday I decided to go to church, and because the rest of people said, I'm not going, me just nobody go. But I felt the impression on me so strong to go to church. It was that same night the pastor man left the place catch, um, catch a fire. Now, when we leave out of the house the morning, we try out the fire, call the fire brigade and stuff like that. I called the pastor and he said to me, 
enemy. This is the plan of the enemy. The enemy know that God have a plan for us. So he want to try to wipe on out. He say, I'm going to put, put on some clothes. I'm going to come for you and carry you to another pastor. He came for us and carried us to another pastor at Covenant Church on Halfway Tree Road. And I remember sitting in a circle and the pastor was there and he was just talking to each of us individually. And I remember when he came to me, he said, you, in pine palm, and he said, you, you're going to go through some things in your life. You're going to go through a whole things in your life. But God is going to use you to go all around the world to tell people what the Lord has delivered you from. And I remember that distinctly because may I say, when he said to me, may I say, may I understand why God would have want to use me. May I understand why God would have want to use me. People of God, I wasn't no ordinary sinner. So I don't want to feel like I'm sitting here. So I don't want to feel like say, I was an ordinary sinner. I was doing a lot of things. The girl molested me and I was dead. Going on molesting other young girls. I was dating older woman, married woman. I not talk about a normal something. I not talk about having sex with a man and not him penetrating me, but me penetrating him. I not talk about deep perversion. I not talk about being in orgies and, and threesome and sixsome and all of them something. And no, 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 normal thing. And so when I tell you today that the Lord has delivered me from these things, when I tell you today that I don't have to do that no more, when I tell you today that all the desire for a woman has left me completely, not because I'm, 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 I'm superwoman, but because I get to a place where I say, God, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. The Bible said that God wants to give us life and life more abundantly. I thought that I was living, but I wasn't living. I was merely surviving. It wasn't until I accepted Jesus Christ and I found Jesus. Jesus introduced me to who he is as a person. Because a lot of time we know Jesus because we family tell us, Jesus loved the little children of the world and stuff like that. But we don't know the person Jesus. But I've encountered who Jesus is. And I remember being in my house, being with this girl. And I remember she, had, she and I were together for years and we'd always have fight me until a serious serious fight and I remember she said she always said is either me go kill somebody or somebody go kill me and the bible speaks about word how powerful word is cut a long story short her baby father I remember she and I had an argument I mean I said I don't really want to deal with a girl anymore so I stopped talking to her and I remember up on me and her breaking up I heard that she got pregnant but this is something that we always talk about she always says she wants to have a child of her own however I got a call about Two weeks after she and I broke up, that's her baby father killed her in her sleep with a screwdriver. Though this was a gruesome act. And I remember the day when I got the call in the morning and I went down there and I said to her mother where, where it happened and the mother said right here upon the bed and I went there and I lie on the bed that he killed her and I said God you have to change me. And I'm not going to say God didn't allow that. Let me get that clear. God never made that happen. It is the choices that we make. It is the choices that we make bring us past some road where Satan can trap we and do whatever he wants. The Bible said the, 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 the devil come to kill, steal, and destroy. And so he destroyed this girl life. But God will use that situation. God will use the tragedy of someone else's situation for bring you into his presence, to bring you into the light. And I remember lying on the bed where him say, where them say him kill her. I'm going to say, God, and I started crying. I'm going to say, God, you have to change me. You have to change me and deliver me. I remember we went in the room with our friends and we were all there um, crying. I would just cry, would just cry. And our mother say, Better me did make her a day with woman because she should go there with man and, 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 and the man kill her. And I don't know what happened. Something raised up on the inside of me and I just started praying. I think it was about five of us that was in the room and we, along with her mother. And all of them were lesbian. Them did it with them girlfriend and them partner and everything. And I stood up and I started praying and everybody was saying Monique I don't know I never know I said I could have prayed but it wasn't even I didn't even know what was happening to me I went home and I was in my bed and I said God I don't know how that spirit you're getting on me but my knowledge now said this is a spirit I said God you have to deliver me from this you have to deliver me from this and I saw I was praying I remember the encounter that I have when I went to her funeral and I saw her going down in the casket it's like I just come out it's like I just get a, a lift out of reality and I went somewhere else and I wasn't seeing her in the casket I was seeing myself and I was going down as if may I go for save myself and I remember my friends were pulling me back and I said Monique she gone but they don't even understand it's like I was trying to save me because I saw me lying in that casket and I got home that 18th of December and I was in my house and I said God you have to deliver me right now today today and I took one month in my house no party no party nowhere to everybody call me Monique you go yes or no me in my house because God have to deliver me because my mother tell me about God and my grandmother tell me about God but me want to encounter God myself. I said God
God, you have to deliver me from this. Because as long as I know myself, this is the, this is my life. Men not know no other life. Men not know no other way but for sin. And so if you are the resurrector, if you are the God that changes life and changes men, you have to change me. And people of God, I start to lose that desire to go out. I start to lose the desire for females. I'm going to say, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to get saved. And I remember going into the church. I think it was a Thursday night. And my friend said to me, she said, woman of God, she said, may I invite you to church tonight. I was at my shop where I was working. And I was sitting at the back of my salon, uh, back of the salon, along with some few ladies. Kathy, bless her soul, wherever she is. And we were there and we were talking. And out of the blues, I just get up. I said, no, I'm going to preach the gospel. And I wasn't even saved. She said, what you say? She said, what you going to tell the people? I said, I'm going to tell them how oh, I'm in our house and fire come and I'm dead. Our oh, lil and truck lit me and I'm dead. Oh, my God, one pool party and nearly join and nobody knows it. I'm in dead and God saved me. She said, that's I can tell the people that I said, I go preach the gospel. She said, I invite you at church. It was a Thursday night. I said, all right, I'm going to come. When I went to the church, I was sitting all the way at the back of the church, all the way at the back, and I sat at the back. The pastor that was ministering, God bless his soul, Prophet Michael Carter. God bless his soul. He came all the way to the back of the church and he said to me, I remember like it was yesterday. He said, the things that you used to do, you don't do it no more. But people still see you as the same person. But God is going to change you and persons are going to see you and they're going to be amazed when God finished with you. He said, stay in God. And nobody knew at that time that I was already saved in my house because I in my house, me get saved by my knee, I cry out to God. And I remember I gave God my life that particular night and it wasn't easy, but days after days and weeks after weeks, the Lord just start deliver me. You see the word of God when the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Meaning say, when the Bible talk about the two-edged sword, it pierce going in and it pierce coming out. When I re begin to read the word of God, the word of God just appears me. And while it appears me, it a dig up some things were in me what are supposed to in me. And so, me lose the propensity to sin, the things that I'm used to do. Me no want to do it no more. Sin get distasteful to me. I'm a could understand why. I'm a start love the things of God. I'm a start love church. I'm and God just start use me and change me. And every day I remember looking into the mirror. It's like the old girl just a fade slowly. Just a fade, just a fade, just a fade. So I can tell somebody today that God is a God that changes men. God is a God that delivers men. May I talk about serious deliverance. May not talk about deliver you. Are you in a certain things that double, double no more? No. I can sit down with a sister confidently. And she, I may not fulfill any way within myself. Or she not fulfill any way. And think say, oh, Monique used to be a lesbian. So I wonder if she appreciates me. No, no, no. A sister lover. Man, not look upon a woman lustful like that anymore because the Lord has delivered me. And what the Bible talks about deliverance, and it is so important she that people understand that deliverance is not a con is not a constant thing. It's a process. We are delivered and we are being delivered just like we are saved and we are being saved. So that's my testimony. God bless you. Hallelujah. I would have you going on and my on. God. Because Jesus. I know the process. I myself, I sat here and I listened to you and I was a little emotional because it's like looking at what the Lord has done and looking at what the Lord is doing. And it's just so amazing. I will Jesus. sit here and listen to you every day. Hmm. I am so happy to be in your company. Jesus. And I'm so happy to be your sister. And I'm so happy for what God Jesus. is doing in your life. Amen. And the Amen. story does never get hold. It Amen. still keeps the Holy Spirit running inside. Okay. And it still feels like God is transforming mm. even myself. And since as we continue, I want to go into a powerful testimony. Can we just give God some praise? Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus. We oh, bless you, God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. You are worthy, oh, God. You, Jesus. you are thank worthy. You, Jesus. you are worthy. Hallelujah. You are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. So as we Hallelujah. move forward, sister, I want to get into altars. Because Hallelujah. when you hear the word altars, the first thing people think about is the demonic side yeah. or the altars of witches or the altars of some, some, some iniquity yeah. or whatever. But sis, altars has so many aspects to it. I want you to get into it. Let me, what is an altar? All right. So an altar, it, it, you have different, different types of altars. And so... An altar, godly altar, is a place where we draw power from God. It's it's a place where we're where we're strengthened. It's a place where we're 
equipped where we're being filled with the power of God. Now, an evil altar is a place where, you know, different persons will go and build up um, altars unto, you know, an idol or make sacrifice to an idol. And the Bible speaks a lot about altars. The Bible speaks a lot about godly altars and, and evil altars. Let me say this. If you read through the book of Genesis, the, the Bible talks a lot about altars. And we see where great men of God built altars before the Lord. Abraham, the Bible said, Noah built an altar before the Lord after the storm has passed. So this is biblical. Um, Moses built an altar. David built an altar. And we see with Elijah and the prophet of Baal, where altars were, were, were risen up against altar. You know, we, you know, as Christians, we will hear altar against altar. Because let me tell you something. People need to understand this. As a believer, you must have an altar. And I have several altars. The Lord um, used it. Funny how you talk about altar and a woman of God. Because I think it was in January. The Lord was just dealing with me concerning altars. And the Lord said, Monique, everywhere you go build an altar. I was reading the book of Genesis. I don't know. I read the book of Genesis over and over. But you know, sometimes the Lord will have you for God back in the, in the same book where you read just so you miss out certain little things and the Lord just showed me that every single way Abraham went Abraham built an altar before the Lord everywhere Abraham go Abraham built an altar so much so till even years after Jacob went into a place where Abraham built an altar and the Bible said that Jacob was sleeping and he had encounters with angel and when he woke up he said truly the Lord was in this place and I know it not why because his great great grandfather had built an altar there before the Lord and so it was a portal where you don't understand is that altars are important for us as Christians when we must know and understand how to build a godly altar before the Lord because that is a place. The altar is like the secret place. That is a place where are you and God alone are communicate. That is where you have kinonia, fellowship, intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Not you and the Holy Spirit are your pastor. Not you and the Holy Spirit are your friend. Just you and the Holy Spirit alone. One on one. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's where you are introduced to the ministry of the, the, ministry of the Holy Spirit. When you, when you have risen up godly altars before the Lord. The Bible talks about the evil altars between the prophet of Baal and, and Elijah. We see that in Mount Caramel. The Bible says that you know, the, the prophet of Baal decides say, alright then, feed them God at the right God. So Elijah say, alright then, no worry yourself. Altar for altar. Because me no say, the God who me serve, Jehovah, he is the covenant keeping God. He is the God. And them I say, no, a Baal a God. So Elijah said, Let, we're not quarrel. We're going to Mount Caramel. Go work it out. So they went there and the prophet of Baal offered sacrifice and to feed them God. Ah, my shiko robo sata. The Bible say when them a cry out to Baal, Baal na answer them because it's a dead God them a serve. The Bible say them cry out to Baal and Baal na answer them. Cut themselves. Them do all sort of things and Baal na answer. Elijah said, my time now. And the Bible will have it that Elijah did something that was what would I consider foolish because we know say, board cannot light with fire if it's wet. And the Bible talks about the water that Elijah poured on the board and him light the fire. And the Bible said that heaven received Elijah Elijah's, uh, Elijah's sacrifice upon the altar. Why? It's not just because God wanted to demonstrate the power, but God knew that Elijah had a relationship with him. That even before the prophets of Baal, Elijah had a relationship with God. Elijah was a man of prayer. And so, he was a man who had altars before, prayer before that one. And so, the Lord took up the sacrifice. And the Bible said the fire came down and, 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 and it consumed the prophets of Baal. So we see where altar was fighting against altar. We see that the altar of God prevailed. And so as Christians, we need to understand, say, we have to build altar. And you can build altar anywhere you go, anywhere you go, in your house, in your bathroom. Two days ago, I was in my house and I was about to shower. And I heard this song started playing and I just started crying out to God. And I was just thinking back on some things from out when I was out in the world. And I was just repenting and I know that the Lord has forgiven me but you know sometimes your mind go back upon some things where you used to do and you said just in case the enemy want to use this against me I said God it just come to me I'm a no I ask you for forgiveness but may I repent for this thing that I have done and so I begin to repent and I begin to ask the Lord I said God forgive me for this you know I've done it ignorantly because I didn't know what was what I was doing but just in case the enemy would want to use that thing against me because this is what the enemy does and that is why you have to renounce the thing the sins that you have committed it all went a long time. You have to continue. You have to continually renounce it because what the enemy will do when the Bible says the enemy is an accuser of the brethren, what that means is that some things where you do long before, years, donkey years, when your time comes for God, put you out there now. The enemy will come and say, Listen, remember you do this, and him start accuse you. So I had to just break all ties between. 
you know, the things that I have done in my past that will cause, you know, any, 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 any hole or, or any stronghold to be in my life. And I was in my bathroom and I sat there on the floor and I started crying out to God. And I started crying out to God. But I said, God, meet me here. This is the meeting place. I tell people all the time, I say, my altar is my meeting place. Church not start when I leave church. Church start when I am home in my house, in a, my secret place with God. I say, God, you have, you, have, you have the ability to come anywhere. Move freely however you want to move. And so when we when 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 we learn to develop, you know, building altars before the Lord, we have to ensure that the place clean. We have to ensure that certain little things when not for dead and not dead. We have to ensure that we make the place in such a set the atmosphere in such a way where the Holy Spirit can come. The Bible says, "Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God." We can grieve the Holy Spirit, and sometimes we have some things in our house where cause the presence of God for not dwell where we there. Because guess what? Some things we have, we don't even understand the, the, what them represent. We don't even understand that these things are what is causing the enemy for have a foothold in our life some simple simple little things and so it is upon you building godly altars before the lord and praying and asking the lord to give you discernment listen the altar when you when you build an altar before the lord that's when you get an anointing when you get an anointing that's when you gain access to covenant and the bible talks about covenant china when you get married you get married upon an altar not true all right when you get baptized you know everything happened upon an altar you go the altar, you repent and all of that. When you are sacred, when you when you when you're dedicating a baby to the Lord, it is done on an altar. So we see where it is upon the altar that you come in covenant with God. It is upon the altar you come in covenant with God. And a lot of person, a lot of people, they're not in a covenant with God because they're not have no altar. You can't in a covenant with God if you don't have an altar. The altar is like the strength, the, 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 the place of strength that, that, that gives you, 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 you and God the connection, the, the intimacy that the Bible talks about. And so you can't just have pray vaguely. You can't just have, you have to learn how to build godly altar before the Lord. The Bible talks about, you know, the priest Zachariah. He was in the temple and the Bible says, raise up incense before the Lord. He had an altar. He had an altar. The Bible talks about Moses. Every single way Abraham went, he lift up a godly altar before the Lord. So we can know, say, truly, the Lord was in this place. We can know, say, listen, man, sometimes you go some place and you don't even have to, you don't even have to say nothing. You just go some place and you just feel. Like the other day, I went to the prayer mountain and I went over there and I sat down and I never even started praying, but I felt the presence of angels. Why? Because that is where I built an altar before the Lord and I remember when 2021 began I think it was in February the Lord said go back and visit that altar in Portmore and I went over there and I think it was me and two of my um my church, one of my church brother and church sisters, and I sat there. And the minute I sat there where I built the altar before the Lord, I felt the presence of angels. This is what people don't understand. Godly altar is a landing strip of angels. It opens a portal. When you build an altar before the Lord, it opens portals so angels can ascend and descend. So we need to get into that place where we learn to build godly altars before the Lord. You can go in a somebody's house. I'm tell Sheena all the time. I remember when I used to go by her house because she prayed so much in her living room. The living room carried a present. Yeah, let me tell you something. When you pray at a particular place, enough it carry an aroma. You don't even have to tell people, but people can just come and say, no man, I feel a peace yeah, so I feel, I feel something, something going on yeah, so yeah, they, they might not, they might can't explain what is happening, but they know say, something happened. So up on altars you find that a lot of spiritual activities happen there. Up on an altar. David was a man who had a lot of altar. He built altars before the Lord and the Bible tell you that David it was a man after God's own heart. And this is what, let me just go in a little more, bit, bit more. The Bible said Abraham was a friend of God. The Bible said David was a man after God's own heart. And I could not understand why when I read through the whole Bible, uh, Abraham was the only man that was called a friend of God. I mean, I say, but God, why? But yes, David was a man after your own heart. And Moses served you well. And Elijah and all those other men of God. But why? I think God called Abraham friend was because of the relationship that they had. God told Abraham, say, Abraham, listen, pack up and leave. I'm going to send it in our land. I'm going to make a sojourn in our land where you don't know nothing about. That is faith. And Abraham went there and he obeyed God. He obeyed God. Everywhere God tell him for God, him go. And everything God tell him for do, him do it. And so even when Abraham asked the Lord for a child, God, Abra God said to Abraham, said to God, said, God, listen, my own, me need, me need a seed. Me need something of my own. Because Abraham obeyed God. Because Abraham had a track, track record with God. He have a track record in other 
spirit because him obeyed God. He is a man after God's own heart. Just like David, everything God tell him to do, him do it. The Bible never said Abraham disobeyed God at any given time. And so Abraham is just a prime example that we too can become a friend of God if we walk in the statutes of God and do what God calls for. Though it's not always easy, but it can be done. It can be done. Whoa, this is it so powerful. As I said, Monique, I'll just sit and listen to you all day because you're so equipped with the word. Amen. No, you, I'm a keen listener. Y'all know that. <laughs> and I heard you said there's no covenant where there's no altar. And I, I you see, God is so intentional. We are, we are speaking about altars right now because as you mentioned, the altar in my living room, I remember me just stop, stop praying there. Get busy. Get busy. With life. Work, life. Mm -hmm. You know, my little own ministry. Right. We just get busy. And I remember I was in my house alone. And I went there. And there is something before even I, I, I acknowledged that one moment. The fact that I went there, I always feel the presence Perfect. of God. And I always wondered to myself, well, I'm always feeling yes, so, so. yeah. Well, I'm gonna feel it. There's, you know, at yeah. different, different intervals of the house, and getting so busy and and answered, and, and I'm happy that you even mentioned how important it is to build an altar. I remember I went back there and I felt the presence so strong, and the the, the presence was so strong I couldn't move. I My stand God. at the living room right there. And I couldn't move. And that was where the Lord started to speak, in, speak to me. Hey, and he Jesus. said, I miss you hey, here. Jesus, my God. And as I'm saying it to you, I, I'm happy that you mentioned it because it's the same thing I'm getting right now. I miss you, dear. Because that was where I was broken. My God. That was where I was anointed. That was where I was war fearing. Mm. That was where I really, I was reading the Bible. I was that fasting. was where God anointed you. Yeah. I, that was where I was on my belly. That was where I was crying. That was where I really just broke down and gave it all and surrendered. And you just speaking an altar made me feel so bad. I'm going to be honest because that spot i've not been there praying for so long mm. and and at that particular time when i was there i heard the lord said i miss you here and the presence of god was so strong now what Jesus. you got what you did sis <laughs> was when i go home now i'm going to go back to that spot yeah, man. and as you speak about altar, people feel like, oh, you're going to be like a table, get a table, put two, click a candle, put mm -hmm. up a book, put pens in your head no. and go on. No. I want you to, I want, before, I want you to explain what, what, it, what it means to be like an altar. But as we're speaking on that, I realize that every part where we pray, some prayers is like, it depends on the type of prayers. It depends on how often you go there. It, it, it can be an altar. Yes. Because I remember yes. at mornings, when, I, when I'd go to work in the morning, I'd go in the studio and I'd read the Bible and then I'd say a prayer. I did that one week straight. I just start doing it. I just start doing it until, you know, we get busy. We'll probably reach work late and we'll just stop. But I remember going into the studio and I start, stand at the same spot again, money. Mm -hmm. And I felt the presence of God there. Because you, said, you, built, you, 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 you built an altar there. That's what you did. <laughs> yes, I would know that you're explaining to me. I'm saying that was, that's an altar. No, because, you know, all, all works change up now. I go into the bathroom and normally start praying in the bathroom. Now start praying in the bathroom. So every time I go in the bathroom, even if I don't go to prayer, yes. I start feeling the presence and I'm like, God. So now I'm understanding that I am building Altars. altars so people think it's like a table two candle four mm -mm. coconut some mm -mm. um grapefruit mm -mm. tell us tell it's us anywhere an altar is anywhere where you find a lot of and a godly altar i should say anywhere you find a lot of prayer a lot of worship it's just that it's it's just a space it's just a space where you say you know say i'm me and god's space it's like my altar as i said before i have several altars and i have an altar in my bedroom i have two altars in my bedroom but one space is where the lord would have me to change and the lord said don't make nobody 
Anybody come in house, don't make them come right here. So that part there, me reserve. Like what lady saw say, there's a room reserved in my house for the Lord. I'm gonna have a room reserved for God. I have a little space, but that's enough. And I remember, funny enough, I think it was about three days ago. I was um in my house and I was listening to some worship song. And I just got up off the bed and I sat on the floor, right where I have the altar. My carpet, my olive oil is there. Sometimes you're there at the altar. And the Lord just said, if you just anoint yourself, you know, I don't know witchcraft. No, you just go there with your back like consecrated olive oil and your prayer shawl or whatever you think to cover your head and stuff like that because the, 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 the altar is a place where you reverence God you reverence him you welcome him in, in such a way where he wants to come the bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people and so I remember I just got off the bed and I sat at the altar and I was sitting there I wasn't praying or anything and I was just sitting there listening to the worship song and I think it was a Danny McClurkin song that was playing um I trust you, Lord. And the song was praying and I was just saying, God, I trust you. I trust you. I wasn't praying. I was just thinking about everything that was happening. And I said, God, I trust you. And though I wasn't praying, it was almost as if me and God did have a conversation. All I kept saying is, God, I trust you. And the, the, the song was ministering to me. And then I started to remember back all of the promises of God. I said, God, I trust you. I believe you can do it. I trust you. And Sheena, I lie down there. I put the pillow and I lay there and I sleep there. When I checked my phone, it was about four o'clock. I'm going to get up and go up on the bed and something said, just stay here for the night. And so the Lord does something. Sometimes you don't even understand. To others, it may be foolish, but God know what he's doing. Sometimes God, why you just lay down, pass straight to the altar. Sometimes God, I do some things in your way you're not, you're not aware about until long after time. We said, this is what I do. Because even that altar that I, I built to the Lord in Portmore, she now will build an altar there. You build an altar there to come with God here a couple of times and pray. And the Lord will say, visit back that altar. And I visited that altar. And when I visited that altar, the Lord did something new. I went there the first week and it was just me and two persons. The second week, it was about five of us. And the third week, it was about 13 of us. And I remember the third week, the Lord showed up in such a way. I literally saw an angel for the first time. I see an angel. And the presence of God came down. As I said, it's a landing strip for angel. The presence of the Lord came down so much. Persons were filled. People just start cry out to God. You felt the presence of God. Nobody never that for pump and I say pray. Nobody now for pump and say worship. Everybody was just offering praises and sacrifice unto the Lord. And so it is mandatory that we understand that listen you can't have a covenant with God if there's no altar. You can't have that bond with God if you don't have an altar. You will know a person based on the the, 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 the presence of God that they carry. People say oh I have the presence of God and whatever. Let me, me see your altar. Where your altar there where you build before for the Lord. That time the way you just know, say, at that particular time, I just you and God. And as Sheena says, sometimes we get busy with the cares of the world, the, the cares of this life, because it's true. It is the reality. And so when the Lord started to deal with me, January, concerning this, the Lord said to me, Money, I want you to be diligent in every single thing that you do. You have to be diligent with work, with your finances, with ministry, with everything. Be diligent. And so the Lord was just dealing with me concerning this. And sometimes we tend to forget, you know, busy with everything that's the prior time becomes less the one always to spend with God it gone down to 20 because we have a, listen we, we, have, we can't be over spiritual we can't always spiritualize things where human being and there must be a balance we have to be practical sometimes we really get caught up with things it's not that we're not praying but that that that, that intimacy that we used to have with God where we would have laid down before God and just a cry and don't know why we cry and a pain we feel we're just there before him and a cry because guess what there's things in us that he wants to get out and it's up an altar a lot of a lot of the deliverance that i have received is on my altar is on my altar because people fight devils that nobody knows about people fight things where them where them afraid for tell people about and so when you build an altar before god you can tell him anything and you're not for be ashamed because to him nothing is hidden so when you depend your altar you just start pour out your heart and your desires before the lord and you start tell god say god you know say me not, me not, me not like how me feel lately me feel like jealousy are coming in my heart it is up on up on the altar that you have built before the lord where the lord will show you it's like a reflection it's like a mirror God will show you who you are and he will show you who he wants you to be and then it is your duty and your responsibility to align yourself to the purposes of God so altars is important for us to build altars before the Lord I mean the enemy do it people out there work in incarnation and I do all sorts of things and I build evil altars I remember going to Hope Garden at a fasting service and we were there at the fasting service on the mango tree and we were all there praying and a literal witch a old woman came up and she was standing 
looking and then and then it's another tree and she was looking towards us and the lady just move her mouth and i said all sort of things are speaking her you know demonic tongues or whatever and the pastor said oh no, don't, don't don't get distracted don't get distracted every single week the lady come and i remember going there for about three executive week and the old lady come every week let me tell you something everywhere you go where you build an altar before god try no say the enemy go come and try for come and do certain little things and so when you go certain place you know just go and just start pray because you don't know what kind of activities go on on that part of ground so when you go anywhere building altars before the lord you pray you consecrate the ground and you tell god say God may dedicate this to you everything every evil activity that was done on this part of ground will render it null and void and you then welcome the angel of the Lord you know so to just um fill the place with with, with with their atmosphere and then the Holy Spirit will come in and just do whatever he wants to do so yeah Hey beauties and cuties, welcome to Sheena Power Talk Youth Link. I'm your host, Sheena Lynn Hansen, and here we have fiery youths for God, pull up, vibe, and chill, discussing serious kingdom business. Sheena Power Talk is powered by the Holy Ghost. We are redeemed, revived, transformed to empower, and I can reassure you there is power, anointing, and fire in every episode. Please subscribe, like, share, and leave a comment, and stay tuned you will be blessed hallelujah my sister i said oh my god this is so powerful and i hope you are listening since you mentioned about we went to the mountain a few times yeah and and I, I listened to you a while ago you said i have built an altar there and it's so it's just so weird that you said that because i was at work one day mm -hmm. and the holy spirit was ministering to go back go back and to the god do that god will do that god will do that god will tell you you will go certain places you just raise up an altar before the lord and god will tell you it may sound away but god will tell us go back and visit the altar there there's something that God wants to do. Go back and visit that altar. I don't remember who. I don't remember if it was Abraham. I don't remember who. I think he's in the book of Genesis. I think it was Abraham who built an altar before the Lord. And the Bible says he called that place Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. A lot of the, a lot of the names that we call God was, 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 was where a person built altar and see the provision of God. When Abraham carried Isaac to sacrifice Isaac upon an altar, the Bible said that, you know, the Lord provide for himself a sacrifice and Abraham called that place jehovah jireh where he saw the lord's provide so a lot of these places a lot of these names that we have for the lord it is men of god who offered sacrifices unto the lord upon altar that's how they found out you know different characteristics about god so it is important for us to build godly altars anywhere Mighty we go god. and there was so much deliverance that take place while we were going to that Alter, like we're we going to that, that mountain. mountain, yes. Because I remember when we were going, the, we normally go in the morning and Early then when morning. I come back, I get dreams of you know, the deliverance yes. was real, that's was, true. It was that's a real true. thing. That's true. Again, you mentioned something about covenant again has to be made at the altar. And I remember, um, me and my bishop was having a conversation, and I said, Sir, no sex still marriage, right? No, this, no, that. And he said, Okay. You're going to come at church and you're going to make that covenant with God right. at the altar. My so I God. know how Powerful. important it is to make a Powerful. covenant at the Powerful. altar. So I could tell him all what I'm saying and right. okay, if right. you mean that, let's hear it right at, at the, the altar. altar. And I remember I made that altar, I made that covenant with God, and it's something that you just cannot leave me. It so can. even though things will come upon me and temptation, I have to, I remember that thing. Me and God and it's not faith. even you, you know, it's not even you, your own ability, you know, at a covenant where you have with God, yes. God will restrain you. So even if you want to step out and do it, God knows him in a covenant with you. So it is his responsibility to keep you from doing that thing. No, but understand what's going on because not many a time I even find myself almost got raped. My God. And I realized it that it could have happened. It could have happened. Because you're in a covenant with God. I was at the place that it, that it was possible, Monique, and out of nowhere, some, uh, somebody came. Out of nowhere, police just came. And I realized that this covenant, 
I can't, it, it's not about me and I cannot do Jesus. anything beyond that or uh, to, to stop the covenant my or to cut, cut it. I have to keep my end of the bargain, but God is helping me. Helping because you. many times I've come into places of temptation and it just couldn't happen. It's like an yeah, angel uh-huh. or something just covenant, block it. Covenant, covenant, and, uh, covenant. So and the covenant. God is so and the covenant good. And God, God so build the covenant with you. I, I remember I was talking to somebody the other day and I was like, then, because them always say, you're pretty, you're nice, you get a nice, nice husband. I'm going say, nice, I'm a pretty, I'm a nice, and I'll be a crabby, crabby <laughs> man, I'll find me. Come like, no. And, and the person said, God is, uh, don't worry yourself when the right person comes. Come, you, you will know, know. Because God is going to, you will feel like you're ugly or something do you, but God just a block you because he's not sending you. God have your power reserve. Right. God so have your own reserve, woman of God. So I understand all. Oh, no, I'm really one for going and talking about covenant. But before we go into that, I listened to your kill and you said there are things that can be in our houses that can that will not allow the presence of God to dwell. And I remember I had portraits, some portraits of Jesus in my house. And oh my. The, 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 well, the, the Jesus that they put in Give our to heads. Us, right. And I have the portrait. And for so long, I've been hearing it in my spirit. Take those down, but may I say. No, I couldn't go to say that because yeah. of Jesus. Mm-hmm, this is saying mm-hmm, that Jesus, mm-hmm. me I promote. So I couldn't go to say that. And for so long, I've been hearing that. And we never, ever, like, give heed to it. Until the other day, I heard it clearly take them down. And I went in, into my bathroom before I take it down. And I said, what is too hard to give up for God? Right. And I took them down and I gave them away. Don't, you don't literally come out of my house, but I have offered somebody then so it's really true mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what it mm-hmm. looks like mm-hmm. you have to be very careful because you don't know what it really represents you don't know what it represents and what what they behind it you see people we need to understand that the enemy is very cunning you know and satan uses a lot of things but we don't even what things say him would i use you understand and so he will use image he will use just some simple little things where we we'll have some certain type of jewelry. and the lord i deal with me with this woman i got certain jewelry certain certain colored here certain little things some basic thing, even some very close where we the Holy Spirit will say, Mm-mm, not that, not that. I want to even understand. We say, but I just close. We want to understand. But oh guess dear. what? God will, God know what happened in the realm of the Spirit because we serve a God that is all seen and all knowing. And we have to understand. Say, our mind can't even begin to understand and grasp the knowledge where God have. And so when the Holy Spirit tell us to do certain things, it's not for us to question and ponder about it. I say, but this, why? But this, why? And you know, God said, don't do it. Just not touch it. I remember I used to um wear like the green colored acrylic because me said me can't bother for do, polish my finger so me just wear the green neon color and I was wearing it for a long time and it's like me just love the thing I'm here and uh, the other day I was watching a um a live video that I did and in the video you know me I just take later me I move up my hand and me I say that look how we oh, that looks so and I something with my love and I remember when I went the day me say me go I had a wedding to attend and me say me go do my nails and I said to the girl just take off them color something yeah man because me don't know why but it's like God just just impress it upon my heart say me don't like this you like it but I don't like it stop doing it so the Lord will just start use certain things for teacher you find say when you start shred certain lucky things and you start obey God you find say things start flow you find say things start flow you find say it is not hard for you to connect with God sometimes you're in your house and because of some things where you have some figure some statue some little picture and some little portrait they have in your house when you pray like you can't pray because what the forces sit upon my God the spirit of darkness sit upon these things so it is hard for the spirit of God to even try to come because guess what the bible says the spirit of God don't dwell with darkness there and so we have to run through our house and do some cleaning man I say God what is in here that is stopping or hindering in your presence from come walk through your house that's what some look at all rubbish some look at all things where some people going from whoopy kill fill up and get rid of them and you find say you start listen man make your house your place which where you live your dwelling place it is supposed to be welcoming for the angel of the lord to come there the bible talks about the angel of the lord presence that is the angel that the, the, the bible talks in in the book of um genesis about the cherubims and the seraphims that 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 protects the glory of god you have to ensure that your house your you welcome the angel of the Lord so the angel of the Lord can come and, 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 and minister to you and tell you certain things. We can't hear from God because of some things we're having our house. Some things where some people give a sheen. I'm going to share this. The other day I was moving out on my own and the Lord said, you know, may I pray about this because, you know, 
because of some financial reason I had to move back in with my mother and I was supposed to only be there for one year and I was there for about four years. I don't know why I stayed there so long, but you know, God said, all right, then this is time now. And I remember when I wanted to leave, the Lord was telling me long before I said, change my bed. I had not slept on my bed for nine months, but the bed was still in my house, but I was sleeping on my sister bed. When I got the place to move, the Lord said, don't carry the bed. May I say, but God, then we may go sleep on I'm going to have no money right now for buying a bed. I remember my birthday was coming up and I said, God, this is what I want for my birthday. I just want to get a place before my birthday and move out. That is what I want for myself. Now, I was planning to say, I go, go up on the, the, the North Coast, go relax and enjoy. I'm like, self, so I safe towards that. So I say, God, this is what I want you to do for me for my birthday. Literally, did I know that the splurge never like go on God. I said, that now going to right now. No unnecessary spending. That money that I was saving was the money that I used to pay for the rent and deposit to move going to the place. When I was supposed to move going that place, man, I, got, I did not have a bed and the Lord said, don't carry the bed. I remember talking to one of my friends and she said, money, maybe you can carry the bed base and the bed head, but don't carry the mattress. When I got off the phone, the Lord said, why y'all listen to people when me don't tell you what to do? God knew what was happening with that bed and why. I remember, I used to get a lot of uh, polluted dreams. I used to get a lot of demonic dreams where some things from my past. I mean, say, God, why me keep on to get them dreams? I'm a spirit cross. I'm a could not understand it. Man of God, when I stop sleeping on that bed, I don't get those dreams no more. When me move up, me say, God, where me get the money from for buy the bed? When I got the place and I was supposed to move the 18th of December, the 16th of December, I never have no money for buy no bed and the money come from buy a big nice comfortable bed nice and big and clean I may say God but you're not easy and the, the Lord said to me because of everything that happened on this bed the spirits people not understand the spirit lodging a bed in and don't come think say because we, we, we talk like this we spoke you we're not spoke you we're spiritual and there has to be a balance we need for understand say you don't take things the Bible say don't look on the things which are seen look on the things which are not seen because the things which are seen they are temporal but the things which are not not seen they are eternal and my could understand that scripture my understand so certain little things will play off as nothing listen man we live in a real world and the spiritual realm is very real if god could have opened my eyes we will see all of the things and we have take place in the atmosphere may i tell you nobody would be holy like we but we have to trust god and do what god tell us to do when i got that when i stopped sleeping on that bed and i got a new bed my find so when i when i moved there and i and i um dedicate the bed to the lord i'm say god no unholy activity now go go on yes so i say god me supposed to go my bed at night time i sleep and get heavenly dreams and encounters and when i went to my bed um the first night i slept on that bed woman of god i got a vision from the lord i may say god no more me really not get no more of them dream that them polluted dream that women used to get and for years i could not understand because i had that bed from i was in the world and god would have remind me of everything what happened on the bed the amount of people were not even me but other person will make sleep on my bed and do certain things for my bed and the lord say get rid of that but it wasn't even just the bed god tell me forget rid of everything when i move in that house and if i'm only thing i move with me is my fridge and my tv and god give me everything new and i could not understand it but guess what certain things what we hold on to we think have sentimental values because they say you know the little big man i'm used to talk to give me the money for buy it and stuff like that i say i have them for years i you attached to it you don't want to let it go but sometimes we have to let go the old so god can give with you and it gives up gives us a peace of mind it gives us peace because i never know someone could have sleep i'm on bed at night time and sleep so peaceful i have angelic encounters and visitation from the lord i remember i went to my bed and i saw the coming of jesus christ i mean i said but god all of them suck me uh, you mean for tell me say i just the fuck say my did i sleep on the bed yeah, and the things them were attached to the bed yeah, i cause my fear of them 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 dreams here but we need for understand say as christians we have to be practical as i heard the woman i got said earlier we have to be practical some things where god tell you to do god now go tell somebody else but you don't have to think say oh maybe maybe spooky or whatever listen how god deal with you is not how him deal with everybody so you have to understand how the holy spirit deal with you and work along with him Yes, woman. Of God. Hallelujah. You see, it? you see, oh God, make you give up the bed. Everything. But I've never mentioned that because I remember my bed too. Mm -hmm. When we have to give up my something. Okay. And, and 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 it's just because of the trailer, trailer with the girls. I mean, the yes. the bed and the activities that that really took place in that bed. But sis, me and you know how much things we did have to give up back then. Huh? But I want to say to you, let me take off that glass there. <laughs> I want to say to you that just the other day, God is saying to me again, declutter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I said, God, 
wait. Well, I'll get my other outfit for forgive. Well, I'll get my outfit for move. But God sees beyond what I can see. He sees far that I yes. can see. So I say, you know what? Anything God to forgive up, I just gotta give it up. And this season, money keep us in my house right now. It's like I have garbage bag and I'm just packing my packing. It's like I'm just getting in my spirit. Start over, fresh. Mm -hmm. Mark you. When I had give away the things, the things that I have gotten was somebody. Somebody was migrating and say i'm going to give you these things and yeah. i was faithful over those things that i was given and yeah. i just believe right now god i said all right give it up again this time because i'm faithful over when we descend may god just give you everything brand yes. new so i am in the process right now of just getting rid of everything starting over brand new i i'm i am in the process of relocating i'm gonna say god all right but just like a start with do, yes, change. make him do it more do. And make and I'm, I'm so do. happy they bring it up back because obviously this is a confirmation to me right. that when you give up, really, he'll give back to mm -hmm. you. Hey beauties and cuties, welcome to Sheena Power Talk Youth Link. I'm your host, Sheena Lynn Hansen, and here we have fiery youths for God, pull up, vibe, and chill, discussing serious kingdom business. Sheena Power Talk is powered by the Holy Ghost. We are redeemed, revived, transformed to empower, and I can reassure you there is power, anointing, and fire in every episode. Please subscribe, like, share, and leave a comment, and Stay tuned, you will be blessed. Welcome back. So, sis, boy, may I tell you, you're doing such a good, My good God. job. You, do you know that you're not only a preacher, but you're a teacher? Have Amen. you ever heard that before? Amen. Because, <laughs> It's always this to me. You always teach me something. You're never coming in my presence. I'm going to learn something. Amen. And it does bring me back to when I just got saved. And Monique was the first, first person that was really there with me. And just the way Osha lived made me learn a lot of things. I remember just getting saved. I never did a care in a book or write no notes. <laughs> but I saw money come home. <laughs> And she had her little book and she take her notes. I'm gonna say, all right, man, get a little book. I'm taking notes. So, so you have to understand, people. This is the life you're living on yeah. that people look at. And and there was just so many things that I could learn from. I want to speak. I remember in the, when I just got saved as well. She was there and she was saying, you know that Satan up in heaven and him go up in heaven and him go make him go like him go tell God say what she now. You see, yeah. she had rated it, and I never knew that. And that was so fresh in my say. I'm like. Like, this is somebody that I want to keep close because me I learned something. When you're just saved and when you're passionate about God, you see everybody where you see God yeah. part, you go and <laughs> stick to them. Amen. You understand? And it's just so powerful. The teaching, preaching, and nineteen, it's not up and it doesn't give you something that you don't understand. She doesn't give you something that you don't understand. It, it, it's broken down. God Amen. is raising up a remnant, my yeah. sister. Yes. What does this mean to you? In the, the Bible says in the book of Joel that God is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh and and and, and it, it, the Bible talks about you know the sons and daughters shall prophesy and young man shall dream dreams and old man shall see vision. Now what it means to me is that God is doing something in every culture, in every um country, in every denomination, God is raising up a remnant everywhere. You remember when Elijah ran away from, from, from Jezebel and he said that Elijah said that to the Lord, said, listen God you know, everybody about them need to bail, bail and me alone there. God said, no Elijah, I have 7,000 prophets who know about them needs to bail so every single culture, every single denomination every single country, God is raising up a remnant the, 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 the end time warriors as I would call them the set of people who sold out for God, a set of people who make up in their mindset, come what me, them are going to do the will of God, it no matter where to go cast them, it no matter if it hurt them flesh, it no matter what persons want to say, they're going to live for God and they're going to go the all way, we are not the Moses generation, we are the Joshua generation, the Bible said the Joshua, I feel the Holy Spirit of God, the Bible said the Joshua generation, they believed God and so they were the one who entered in the promised land, was it the Moses 
generation. It wasn't the ones who left Egypt with, with, with Moses because they doubted God. And so because they never believed what God said, they might go round and round in a circle, still them dead off in the wilderness. They never make it to the promised land. But the Joshua generations were the one who made it into the promised land. And so God is raising up a Joshua generation, a set of people who believe God. And let me tell you something about the remnant to God to raise up. Them don't look Christian. Them not in a big hat and long skirt, don't you? So, and them now, so who don't know? God to raise up some set of people where, 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 where to the masses where God, them are going to say, but she don't look like a woman of God. It don't look like a man of God. But God introduced you to the kingdom. So it's not about how you look. But the kingdom is within. Because God placed the kingdom. When the Bible says thy kingdom come. That is what the remnant is about to do. The, the remnant is about to avail themselves. So the kingdom of God can come within them. The kingdom now go open and come out of the sky. The kingdom of God is within us. And so we don't need to look like. And fit the status quo. To become the remnant. We are the remnant because we avail ourselves. We are the remnant because. We choose we believe where God say over where man say we are the remnant because we make up in our mind say listen God we understand and know say there's no other way but you and so with everything that we're facing and going through we choose we walk with you just the same so that is what God is doing God is raising up a remnant God to raise up some set of people from out of some different different denomination listen let me tell you something. I don't like religion. I just think it's a way to just divide people. And so it doesn't matter if you're apostolic. If it doesn't matter if you're Pentecostal. It doesn't matter if you're an Anglican or a Methodist. From your love Jesus and your belief that Jesus Christ is Lord. Me and you can be friends. Me and you can part. From your belief that God is able to do anything. Let me tell you something. God is taking me to a place nowhere. I'm going to doubt him no more. I'm going to thank God for these two weeks that I've been home. Because the Lord really had to deal with me. The God, God really had to deal with some matches, some issues the soul some things where as Christians we, we try to cover up we don't deal with we go to church and we clap and we speak in our tongues and all of that but God I deal with it in depth and this is what the Lord has been saying to me the Lord said money get to know Jesus that's what I heard a couple weeks ago I mean I say but me, me know Jesus I have a relationship with Jesus and as I said earlier we know God and we know Jesus but but we know of him but there's a difference to know him we, 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 we know about God the Godhead of the Trinity and the ministry of the Holy Spirit and Jesus three different entities that, that, that is one God but sometimes God will have us in a season where we get to know the Holy Spirit where we know the Holy Spirit because this is the reality Jesus is is not here on earth. Jesus is in heaven sitting at the right hand of God making intercession for us. The Holy Spirit is what we have here in the earth realm. And so the Bible said the Holy Spirit is the one who, he's our paracletos. That's what the Bible call him, the paracletos. He's the one that comforts us. He's the one that, that, that searches the heart and the mind of God and tell us what to do and, and give us ideas and all of that. And so we have to know Jesus in order to bring Jesus to others. We have to know who Jesus is. And I said this everywhere ago as Christian when I supposed to go and tell people so we are Christian your lifestyle is supposed to be a piece of woman can look on and read man I need to look on Sheena for Sheena tell me so she's a Christian I'm supposed to see the fruit of the spirit evident in our life she's supposed to bear the fruit of the spirit the characteristics of God I'm supposed to see humility I'm supposed to see love I'm supposed to see kindness and forgiveness and all of these things these character that Jesus um Jesus had when he walked on the earth and so God is raising up a remnant who is going to carry Jesus to carry who Jesus is as a person when he walked on the earth. It don't look like the normal people. It don't look like the normal Christian them. We're full of power. We're full of Holy Ghost. We know when we open our mouth and say certain things. We're not speaking words vaguely because we have a mouth. We are speaking the word. I tell people all the time. Say, don't me look simple. When you see me and me alone, I walk me and walk with an army. Because there's a force that backs me. So when I sit to somebody, say, I say, God bless you. I not just say, God bless you because I have a mouth for say it. I say about the force what they be I mean, I go ensure say you are blessed and that is what God is doing in the earth realm people are supposed to open their mouth and speak things and see it manifest open your mouth and speak things and see it happen why because you believe God and that's what makes you a remnant hallelujah this is so powerful as I keenly listen to you woman of God you're saying, you're, you said in this season God is doing a thing inside of you and you, you, you are not religious yes the other day I was say I've been seeing so many things going on. Mm -hmm. So many things that, as a young believer, I'm like, no. If, if, if this is the Jesus I read about, this is not the blueprint and mm. the lifestyle that Jesus mm. lived. Mm. And I said to God, Mr. God, 
I tell you the exact conversation, man. I say, God, I love you. You know, I say, I love you. I love Jesus. I love Holy Ghost. I love the word. I love anything. But I say, God, I don't want to be religious. My God. I don't want to be imprisoned in a religion where yes. it's division. Yes. Because what I'm seeing in religion right now is division. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, God, and I said this over and over again. Me know God get it, but me just a state come more and God understand it. Mm -hmm. Me say God, me not really just me not in this religious yes. thing. Me, what is important to me is the relationship. Friendship. Amen. I say, Amen. God, my, my, my relationship is more important to me more than anything, anything else. else. Amen. It's not about the Christian. It's not about going to church. It's not about the life where nobody else I live. But my relationship, that is what is important. So when you said that, I'm saying God is doing something, you know. You see, the people that is called in this season is doing something because that's the same thing I was saying. Yes. I am not into this religious thing. I am more relationship i don't want to be divided and i keep saying i don't want to be like everybody else me no want me, me, the characteristics that i'm seeing that is not godly is not for me to judge but, but it's for me to be a better version amen of me. amen 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 so amen so it's, uh, it's not that i'm standoff it's not that i'm acting anyway it's just that i'm not gonna get my spirit mixed amen. up and i'm not gonna get my anointed exactly. tainted by people exactly. that doesn't want to love god and exactly fear god. exactly exactly okay. and as i said god had, god had deal with me that god i mean i haven't been anomaly go live because a lot later and my heart, you know, just go and teach the people. But with everything, when I said, I go up on Facebook the other day, and I was just so disturbing on my spirit. I said, God, and God, I deal with me. God, I deal with me. Come As on. him, I show me, him, I deal with me. Come and on. so, my always tell people, said, the word hit the messenger before it hit the persons who are supposed to hear it. And the Lord was just saying to me, that 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 people know in the body of Christ seeks glorification rather than giving glory to God. I'm gonna say, God, what do you mean? People want to come to God now because it, it, when you when we were younger, it wasn't like how it used to be. Where you find say a lot of old people that serve God. No, it's a different thing, different era in a way. God has raised up some young people, some babe. What well, the Bible says, out of the mouth of um babe and suckling the Lord has ordained praise. So God has do a new thing in a, in a, in, a, in a the earth realm right now, but Persons are using, I'm a feel strong, I want to talk. Look to me, listen to me, woman of God, give me five minutes. Persons are using the kingdom of God as a way for, 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 for gain popularity for themselves. Persons are use God and the things of God for gain popularity, for gain fame, for gain attraction and not glorifying God. I remember I was watching a live on, on Facebook the other day and the Lord was just speaking to me about the person and, and I could not understand it because I said, God, I'm not a person who judge, I'm not judgmental. Mm -hmm. But when the Bible says, you need to try the spirit. The Bible tells us to try all spirit. Now just see everybody has said Jesus Christ is Lord and believe that. You have to try the spirit because let me tell you something. The Bible said the, 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 the devil will appear as the angel of light. So every spirit woman see me, I try the spirit. Me now look on you, the person. Me I look on the spirit where they're behind you and the Lord was just saying, this person has lost their way. And me I say, my God. And it's a powerful, 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 the person powerful. And I was just looking at it and the, and, and the Lord was just started to just speak to me and say we are seek glorification too much as a people we want to we want to be we want here say we're anointed we want here say we're powerful we want here say we're this we take all of the glory but God want to raise up some people who you're not even care if people want to say you're anointed because you know say and you by yourself you know say everything's supposed to go back to God all of the glory is supposed to go back to God and so I remember being in my house and I said persons are calling me and I said woman of God oh I don't see a life I said so come on the Lord I deal with me as soon as God finish deal with me, you will see me. Because me tell God long before me get saved, me say God, me don't want to be an ordinary Christian, you know. Me don't want to come into the church and come into the body of Christ and just do what me say everybody are doing. You know. Me say God, me want to be set apart and distinct, you know. And so me have to get myself in a place where if me see me a slack a certain way, me say God fix this. Me not like oh me a feel and me don't want to get doubling certain things. So we're saying God, the body of Christ right now need a serious intervention. And let me tell you something: while persons are zealous and them love the fire for God. I like that because may I tell you, God I raise up something, God I lit some fire in some people's soul and I, and I love God, I love that. But at the same time, we have to ensure say, our motive behind serving God is right. 
is not because we want to be popular, we want to be seen. You see, when you don't crave certain things, God will give it to you freely because God has said, your heart is not there. King Solomon, God never asked him, God asked him when he wants and him never tell God, say, I want riches. God asked him, say, whatever it is that you want, I will grant it unto you. Him said, God just give me wisdom for deal with the people. The Bible talks about a woman by the name of Queen Sheba. She's from a, this Ethiopian woman. The Bible says she has holy power money. And the Bible says, woman of God, when them are talk about Solomon and a big up Solomon for Solomon um, knowledge and, and, and his wisdom, the Bible says she never go. A long after she go to the palace and the Bible says everything where she carry, she carry so much things to Solomon and when she go, she said half of these things wasn't told unto me because she got to a place now where she realized say, the spirit of God is really up on this man like this man can't do all of them things there by himself. I'm tired of seeing persons saying bless you and God is going to deliver you and people are not being delivered. It break my heart when I'm there at church and I see sick people are come at church and I'm a leave sick. The devil is a liar. The Bible tells us that God is a healer and I'm not saying that everything is supposed to be left on the, the, the preacher, the minister. Of course the person has to open up themselves and believe God. But at the end of the day my belief said no in the last days we were in. I'm supposed to have some more power because the Bible tells us that God has given unto us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means shall harm us. I now see the power when we am supposed to say and the Lord was just talking to me and saying we're crying out and we're saying we want power but God has said we don't have the capacity for who was the power when we a cry for. Now if you want God to use you and you want to carry the raw power God may talk about the kaboom of God. God say open up your spirit and give me my shiko rabasaya, the space to fill you up so you can carry my dunamus power we don't have no power we are lightweight and so these devils and these principalities where the enemy are sent out now they may work overtime they no sleep. Christians are spent too much time in you know, some things where they are not supposed to in you know, a focus on some things where it never even matter to them. God has said if we could I just get to a place where nothing else matters. It no matter about the bills, it no matter about the work. And I'm not saying that we're supposed to be careless because God no call for be careless. But at the same time, we have to be balanced. Balanced enough to know, say, we're not going to forsake our relationship with God because we're living in the last days. And whether people believe it or not, them ears are going to come from what kill fill up. Jesus is going to return. But let me tell you something. Men I just want to go ever so. I want to carry some people go ever with me. Me I want to just send me a Christian. I'm going to demonstrate the power of God. I want when I go in our territory, demon supposed to lift up because them know say somebody with an anointing is here. I want when I go in a certain place, I must speak certain things. The atmosphere is supposed to shift. Why? Because we're atmosphere changer. But we as Christians know we get caught up in some carnal things. We get caught up in a carnality and God has say, get out of that. Get out of that. More give power. The Bible talks about the church in Acts. They demonstrated the power of God. The Bible talks about Peter. The Bible said the man shadow healed the sick. And we are talking about the power of God. And we are talking about the kaboom of God. And we don't have the power that we are talking about. We are saying God use me. But we now avail ourselves for God for you. Listen, let me tell you something. And I say this all the time. Stop asking God for more of him. Because we don't have, we, we, we can't host God. You have to tell God, say God take all of me. And, and, and the things that we pray, we have, to, listen, we have to be so strategic. Even down to the T. We have to cross every T and that every I. We have to be strategic. Even how we pray. Because listen, let me tell you something. We fight a real devil. And he's very well alive. And let me tell you something. Even look for who him can take out. A whole heap of Christian machine of the body of Christ. We are walk around with love God and them not have no destiny witches and devils and wizards steal them destiny and them a walk around and them a go in a church and them a clap and say hallelujah my bind the spirit there it is full time for us to arise as the church of Jesus Christ and make demons and principalities know that God is not dead we serve a God that is alive we serve a God that is powerful we serve a God that power red sea we serve a God that called the dead man to come alive and so if we're ever going to be effective in the kingdom of God we must must have the agenda of God on our heart. We must know that we have to walk in a kingdom power. We're not walking on no power. We're not walking in any power. And God has said, Monique, I like myself. I said, God, I don't want to be ordinary. I mean, I just want to tell people, say, you are delivered and pray for them. I said, God, I want me to pray things and mash up in the spirit. Never to return. I want me to pray. Listen, let me tell you something. Woman of God, you see when you build an altar before God, even when forces and all sorts of things that fight against you, that you are not aware of because you have an altar with God and you have a covenant with God. God just has sent angels for an assignment and say, kick that, kill that, shoot them that she don't know about it, but shoot them that. All when you're asleep, I 
don't know what I'm going on. Angel, fight for your behalf because you're in a covenant with God. God is obligated to protect you. And so I said, God, I don't want normalcy. And because I know I don't want to be normal, I know so I can't give God normal time. I have to spend time under the presence of God. I have to learn to prostrate before God. I have to learn to submit to God. I said no to food. I said no to some things I like. I said, God, if I saw, I saw. But God, may I give you all of me. I have to learn to listen. Let me tell you something. A few of my friends will say, Monique, oh, man, I hear from you, and they don't understand that sometimes it's not even like you don't want to stay in contact, but sometimes you're just caught up in us. You're caught up in our realm with God where you just don't want what everybody I'm going to tell God all the time. I say, God, me no what, it no matter if me never get a big house. It no matter if me never get to drive a car. It no matter even if me never get for married. Me want to know, say, at the end of the day, I'm going to serve my purpose. I'm going to carry out the will of God for my life. I hear Miles Monroe say, when him dead, him want dead empty. And I believe that that man died empty. The man gave everything that he had to God. And so, it no matter if I get all the things in the world, because God don't tell me, say, in God prepare a mansion. So if the mansion, no, if I receive the mansion here on earth, one day heaven away from me, but now I just go to heaven and just cock up my foot and wear a, a cute little crown. So, I want to know, I do the work. I want to know, at the end of my life, they can say, money can impact a generation. I say, God, give me the key for serve my generation. I don't want to be ordinary. I don't want to be lukewarm. I don't want to have to be cool tomorrow. The devil is a liar. God says in the book of Revelation, pick, um, pick your mind. Is either you're hot or you're cool. Because if you're lukewarm, you're going to spit you out. I want to be on fire for God always. I don't want if I'm in a, at a certain place and somebody calls me and says, Oh, my God, pray me. I say, Give me five minutes. Right away, cut to Rabaka Saya. I don't have to know we're fighting against you. But when I start shoot word in the realm of the spirit, I shoot Rabaka The power where I come from is supposed to lit down, supposed to chop. Let me tell you something. Last year, woman of God, I was praying. And I got caught up in a vision. And I find that from as long as I can remember when I pray, I tend for hours and move my hand. And I could not understand it. And I got a vision. Sometime last year, I was praying and I saw a gold, a gold sword. Well, it's like somebody, I never see who, but it's like a gold sword just dropping on my hand. And the Lord said, whenever you're praying, just cut, cut, shut up, cut, And so whenever me are warfare and Christian don't pray no more, we're warfare. We don't pray anymore. We have our devotions with God and we pray, we offer, you know, we worship unto God, but we warfare because this is a real war and we're fighting a real devil and we have to have real power to conquer the real devil we are fight. So God said to me, say, whenever you're fighting, whenever you're warfare, use the sword that they have given and the Bible talks about the armor of God the sword of the spirit which is the word of God that cut to sunder both soul, spirit and marrow and so we have to be equipped we have to be equipped we have to be equipped if we're going to ever go out there and create an impact and make an impact for Jesus. We have to be equipped. I'm not glorifying myself. Nobody need to see me and know me. They're supposed to see God in me. They're supposed to see Jesus in me because at the end of the day that is what I'm here for. To bring glory to his name. God bless you. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. That was so powerful. Yeah. And right before we close, because I want her to tell us a little bit more about our, her own ministry Jesus. and where to find her. But as Hallelujah. she spoke, and listen to me, I hope you get this word and lock on to this word and take heed to this word because this word is a powerful word. No woman of God, you've been speaking, mighty God. Come on, Hallelujah. just give God a praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. Have you been speaking? I'm a keen listener. You said God will have you in a season where you're just with him. This season, this social media thing has really become draining to me. But ever since 2021, the Lord started to speak to me about being anchored. And he started to minister to me about how many people are in the shallow when we are supposed to be in the deep. Mm -hmm. And because we are in the shallow, even if we don't have as much God, because the water is, because you're, you're in the shallow, you have, you have a farmer God in this, mm -hmm. but not knowing the power there. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like you're dwelling with him, but really you're not dwelling with him. You're just using him. And, and I used to do Sheena Power Talk <laughs> every Sunday. And from the other day, I'm saying, it's like, it's like there's no it's not that there's no passion, but there's just something, and God is just saying, deeper, yes. deeper, yes. deeper. Like, just, yes. it's okay, just deeper. Yes. And everybody coming, oh, we not see you, we not this, we not that. I mean, and, 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 and do miss them come like preach. Yes, yes. But something now, give me for God, dear. Mm. Because God has said, listen to me, you, you, you need depths. Mm. 
We are need God. depths. Right? So guess what you are going to do? You are going to go deeper. Like we are anchor you in a yes. deep right yes. now. Deep we don't want waters. you to step on the surface, just a speak, or just a little bit. We want you exactly. to know exactly in what you're saying. What you're saying. And as I'm there, and everywhere I go, as the Lord speak to me, he would send a confirmation. Confirmation. Woman of God, God is calling you to deeper. Mm. And I'm saying yes, because this is what I feel in my spirit. spirit right. And this is what the Lord is ministering to me about. So me I say, me not really have it. I tried going live last week Sunday. Yes. <laughs> Woman of God, Mark, you mean no way God has said to me. Right. But because people are saying, you know, not see see and them want the word. So, all right, you know, I'm going to share a little word. You see, when I finished live, I felt so drained. I'm going to say, God, I mm-hmm. felt like I went ahead of you mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you said, Dwell deeper. with me mm-hmm. deeper. Yeah. I'm going to say to myself, say, I went into prayer. I'm going to say, listen to me, God. This social media thing, <laughs> me now get caught up in it. Because the aim is where me want to yes. know you better. My right. relationship with you Converse. is very important. Yes. Yes. And it's not about me. And this is why Sheena Power Talk Youth Link is important to right. me. You know why? Because it's not about, about me. Right. It's about bringing out other persons and showing the power of God and showing the transforming power of Amen. God. This Amen. is what it has been passionate to me. And God does have me just sitting not doing a Sheena Power Talk. Sometimes we even do a motivational video. It feels so, because where God really warm me right you. now, it's just in a prayer, in a dwelling. All right. There were some things I went on a 21 days fast. I'm also doing a mentorship class with Prophetess Sarah right. Smith. And I, I went on a 21 day fast, Wafif, with Wafif, the Daniel yeah, fast. Yeah. And and I did it last year, but this year was so much more better because I don't know, but you know, every time you do something, you, you get better more, at right. it. And I was doing, I was going and doing the fast and, you know, expecting something out of it. And I, it happens to be that a vegan food place was at, up from my workplace. Yeah. So it was easier for, for me right, to, right. to not eat the meat and to just focus on the one meal and the, a healthy meal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember like at 18 days in the fast, I went into the vegan store and vegan food restaurant place, yeah. the restaurant mm-hmm. place. And the woman said to me, I realized I just start eating different. It's like I feel the Holy Ghost from the same time. When I collect the food and I step outside, Monique, the air is so powerful. Nobody can tell me, saying I got them mm-hmm. in this, but I can't me no, no meat. Stop eating meat. I must say, no. Me, I tell you, me, I walk yeah, and I talk yeah. to myself. Me, I say, God, you're not, because I always say, I want to give up something at the mm-hmm. beginning of a year. Right, right. Not, not for late, but for the beginning for of, the of a new year. The okay. last 2020, I gave up pork. Right, right. And, 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 and in 2020, I gave up burger because I remember God put me in my living room and sit down in that same place and me see a big ex from Burger King. <laughs> and I say, what that? Because every morning, you would I buy burger. burger King and go oh. work? And I remember, I remember there was this angel like was at the door and he was calling me into the room and he said, come dwell with me. And before he reached here, there was a sign, no a big ex over the burger. So I know that was something God wanted, to, wanted him, me yeah, to give up. Yeah. So I gave up pork mm-hmm. and I gave up burger. No, me I do my Daniel fast. I said, why? <laughs> After the 21 days, <laughs> me I go have a feast day. <laughs> and I hear no meat. I mean, I talk to myself on the road money. Me I said, God, I joke you <laughs> make. I joke you make God because this can't really no me God then when me got eat. And it just continued that the vegan place just continued. To, it's not a perfect place. Just a walk away. Yeah. You buy your lunch or you I buy your dinner. And... Just make sure I will get into the habit of, of that. But Monique, it felt so hard. And this is what makes me understand now. When God tell you to do something not easy, it Mm-mm. pinch you. Mm. Hurt it your flesh. stretch your flesh. Yes, I'm going to say, no meat. And I can tell you this, Monique, I have not eaten meat. And I don't feel any different. No but, but, but not that I don't want it. You still desire it. I still you desire it. You still have a pray for it. I still desire it. I still desire it. And the, the farthest I'd go, because I we start doing our research. So God, fish and meat. <laughs> because you know we start yes, going to research right, now, and right, say, right. no man fish is not meat so you know me I eat a little salt fish, fish you know yeah. I me mean? I'm gonna eat a one fish and them little thing there but I just feel it in my spirit even though I eat the salt fish because I it's like I waited like a whole 48 days before I even 
tip the sawfish or the fish. But it still just bothers my spirit yeah, yeah. every time I, I sit around the fish like I'm not supposed to eat it. And every time I get a confirmation, God is calling you to be vegan. And then I say, God, what is... I remember somebody messaged me and she said, the enemy is trying to use food to poison you. My God, and, the devil is alive. And I felt it because I know that God was really calling me to sleep. She eating yeah, habit. Yeah, yeah. I just said the woman said burger, mm. meat, chicken. Be careful of those type of food. Whoa. And I already had got it. I never said it before, you know. I never tell anybody what got it, but I just feel comfortable For to say, say it, no. no. Yeah. And he said, no me, Monica, I'm just a got to me eat. No me. Tell me how I talk to my mother last time. I may mean, say, go on, you're up the big pork and the big axe still. And you know, it, they know because you're more company. Right, right. Really, you know, everybody, and sometimes people, yeah, they are work and people like them pop pies and them <laughs> chicken. I'm seeing somebody coming with jerk pork. I may mean, say, God, that pork is in my nose. <laughs> but you know, it, it, it's like, it, when you love God, you'll be obedient. Yeah. You're obedient because you love God. I'm going to think that is, that is one of the things. It's very hard. I'm going to tell you something. The journey is not easy. We, and it don't, don't bother look for me. I say, we look pretty. So the journey must be easy. It's not easy for, for me and for anybody else that yeah. is going and pressing to the mark of the God. It's not a playground. It's a battleground. It's constant warfare. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get weary. But when you're out in the deep, you just have to know that you're anchored. Because Jesus was sleeping in the midst of a great storm. Mm -hmm. That means that no matter what you're going through, Jesus is there. Don't expect it to be easy. Don't expect it to be like butter half a uh, uh, for the sun, yeah. just don't expect it to be easy. What you need to know is that God is with you, and whatever you're going to, it's either teaching you something, birthing you, birthing uh -huh. something, or taking you somewhere. We're not Amen. gonna tell you that Amen. it's overall easy, my sister. It's not, it's it's not, not easy, it's not. but we can dress up and look nice because what we have the assurance that grace is alive exactly. in our life, Amen. mercy is alive Amen. in our life, and God Amen. is absolutely fighting for us amen i tell persons all the time say i can i could be going through the worst situation mm -hmm. no food in my belly and you will not know because my, my, my feel my refuse for look like what may i go through because the bible tell you say no god is a god you need a slumber and a sleep and the bible tell you say no matter what we are go through we're supposed to rest because god give his beloved sweet sweet sleep so if god is the keeper of israel and him need a slumber and a sleep why me for up may i go sleep because him is already up That's working true. it out on my behalf so may I go That's rest, true. may I go sleep through my storm, knowing confidently that the God that I serve is working it out. You know why a lot of people worry, Sheena? Because they don't have the faith in a God. When you have faith in God, you don't worry. I'm not going to tell you that the situation or the circumstances now go rest my it. I go rest my because as human beings, you know, we like for fit things and we like when things set a certain way. We like when we have control of things. And the Lord tell me that faith, the, this faith walk is not a thing where we're going to have control over certain things. It's like a blind person walking, trying to find their way, but you're being led by the Spirit of God. So I don't worry certain, certain things will arise. I don't worry about it. I say, God, just give me the wisdom and the grace for go through this. Because some things what we go through, it not, we're not going to just go through it just like that. We, we can't ask God for, say, God, just take with this. No. We have to go through it. And we have to endure it. And so we have to just know, say, at the end of the day, no matter where we go through, we can rest assured that Jesus have us. He might work it out. He might work it out. Hey beauties and cuties, welcome to Sheena Power Talk Youth Link. I'm your host, Sheena Lynn Hansen, and here we have fiery youths for God, pull up, vibe, and chill, discussing serious kingdom business. Sheena Power Talk is powered by the Holy Ghost. We are redeemed, revived, transformed to empower, and I can reassure you there is power, anointing, and fire in every episode. Please subscribe, like, share, and leave a comment, and stay tuned you will be blessed hi guys i think i want to say a big shout out to humble boss production and i want each and everybody on my youtube channel or anywhere on my social media platforms to just go over to his youtube channel humble boss production and just press the subscribe button listen to me he's the humblest person i've ever gotten the chance to work with and not only is he humble but he does great work all my work is done by humble boss production i am happy to end that 
this move, I am happy to endorse Humble Boss Production. Please subscribe to his channel right now. Stop what you're doing and subscribe to Humble Boss Production. And with Humble Boss, the best is yet to come. And the best is yet to come. And as you mentioned, faith, we have come this far by, by faith. faith. Amen. Sister, just give, let us just give God a big praise. Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister, I just want to use two minutes as we are wrapping up. Tell the people where to find you. I want you to speak a little bit on your ministry because sis got excuse you. <laughs> ministry going on right now. I want you to tell the people a little bit more about that as they would have known that you are work, working how God wants you to work Amen. and tell people where to find you. But not just that. At closing, I want you to give me your big ups and mm -hmm. your burn out. Okay. All right. So, um, you can find me on Facebook, Evangelist Trout, and the Lord has laid this ministry on my heart last year. It was a couple of years ago the Lord gave me the name of the ministry, but it wasn't until last year, you know, my decided to say, I'm going to stop, drag my foot, I'm just going to get up and do the will of the Lord. And so the Lord gave me this, um, the name of the ministry is Exousia Movement. And, and why I say Exousia Movement? Because it's a movement. It's not necessarily a ministry. I don't want to hold God in a box. And so the, the meaning of Exousia is power and authority. And the Lord said, this is what I have given unto you, power and authority to speak things and to see things done and manifest and all of that. And so it's where I just go on Facebook and, and just teach the word of God, just sit down and teach the word of God. And she and I say, people say you're a preacher, but I like to consider myself as a teacher. I like to teach the word and I ask the Lord to give me a grace in such a way to break it down so people can understand. Because oftentimes people are minister the word and they come with so much, you know, metaphors and so much um, theology and all of that. So they might preach over the people and the people them now understand. Mama said, God, give me such an anointing and such a grace in such a way that whenever I minister the word, the old, the educated, the, 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 the persons who are, who, who not so educated can understand what I say give me the grace to reach all man and so I have exousia movement it's on pause now as I said before God just had deal with me but you can go on my page evangelist Trout, and um on Facebook and follow and watch some of the old videos trust me they will bless you because the other day my lady on me I watch about four of my videos I mean I said God no man this girl I preach word like she gone deaf in the word but you know the Bible said the word of God is very it's timeless so no matter where you go through you can't hear a word or preach five months ago and it will still bless you and so yes yeah, so you can follow me and um Instagram, the underscore redeemed one, and Facebook, evangelist show. The burnout is persons, you know, doing the work of God, but the motive behind it is wrong. May I burn out that? May I fire in the name of Jesus upon that? When you're serving God, you have to intro say your motive, right? So that's what my burnout. Another thing I burn out is the fact that, you know, um, we're not united. We don't, we don't really love. We say we love, but we don't really love. And so may I burn out that we need to have love in our hearts for our brothers and our sisters. We don't have to know each other to love one another. The Bible says we're supposed to love. And so may I burn out that. But my big up is the fact that there are so many young persons now who are on the rise, who are zealous for God. People are live for God. They have people out there where just are dedicate themselves to God. Whether it be by preaching the word, whether it be just giving themselves to encourage somebody, whether it be, you know, in using their gift and their talent to, to, to just push the kingdom of God. I love that. So may I big up to that. Persons who really are give themselves over to the work of God, big ups to that. Yeah. I, I just thank you so much for coming, my sister. You are so welcome. And I love you. And I, I want love you, you to too. know this, that everything that you have done, the time that you have given to me, even when I just got saved, it's appreciated. And I'm praying that God will reward you in ways that I can. You have taught Jesus. me a lot of things. I honor the grace that is on your, li on your <laughs> life. God. Because what we fail to do is honor. Yes. And we must learn yes. to honor. So I want you to know as a sister to sister, I honor the grace that is Jesus. on your life. I am proud of you and I just Thank want you Lord. to go far. I'm excited Amen. for what God is doing Amen. and will do in your life Amen. and you have not seen nothing yet. I Amen. just believe that God has something supernatural, Amen. so great Amen. and you will definitely be the difference that you are asking God for. It. I love I you. It. Thank you so much. I love you and too, my <laughs> I don't like to call your fans or supporters because I like to stay into my place. Yes. So I said, family, thank right. you so much for watching Sheena Power. Anything you want to say? Yes, I was going to stop you, but let me say this. Um, Sheena, 
you know, oftentimes, sometimes, me, our friend, me, I'm going to tell people all the time, so she is my covenant sister. So, I'm going to see her every day and talk to her every day. Me, me and I have a covenant together. And so, it no matter which part of the world she did, no matter where I tell her, mama, and I said this to her, because, you know, sometimes, because I work got a carrier, you understand certain things. I remember when I, when, 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 um, in a Sheena initial stage, in her infancy stage, and she would still consider herself as a babe, but I tell her all the time, I said, girl, you have grown so much. You're grown past the limitation where people put upon you. And I always say this to her, I say, Sheena, you are going to go far. And she always, sometimes she doubt her, I say, but let me tell you something, me can tell you because me know her, me know her. Me know her, know her like, oh, me know her, but me know her. Me not sleep in one bed, That's and my true. sister, me and I pray and cook and something, say, I know her. But one thing I admire about this woman of God, she's a fighter. Don't take her a lie. Don't because you see her pretty up so and at and so, she's a fighter. I remember me, I talk to you, I feel the presence of God. I remember one night, Night, we were I was I was at your house and you know you were coming under so much attacks and I was in the other room and you were in the other room and you get up and you come on your lay down side of me and start crying I said money we can't take this no more why this not stop and you know I remember being there encouraging her I said she night so stop just your warfare away got a carry go and I remember at some point in time because of how the warfare would come upon her it's like I feel a way and I'm saying I said God where else me for tell her because this really come like it not stop for true this get over and I remember she was crying but even while she had cried she never said she had to give up she never said me done with God or whatever she always a push even at her weakest point I remember one day I see her in the living room and she have a big carpet with one lion on it you still have it and me and her a prayer me I said me say, you know, myself me I say the neighborhood must say me no know what the house here every night a prayer but I remember she was there and she was praying you know man and she had prayed and she had said God me nah give up use me and I remember the Lord was just ministering to me even that same time and I was praying for her and I was saying God because of how much she got you and how much she endure she endure a lot and it's not because I'm a friend may I say this men are a friend and she's my sister but my respect the anointing with upon her life and one thing me know me not get familiar she not can call me and say woman of God this is what the Lord say I'm going to receive it and it has happened because God used her many times for minister to me so me not get familiar but sometimes we, we work in the, in the kingdom of God and people see we and people think so well, life easy her life is not easy my life not easy but fair life not easy and sometimes I see some 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 things where people say and some things that she have to endure and she keep going and she take it with a smile and that shows the character of God because guess what that shows humility so even people who talk bad boy you can still go and minister the word to them with love and you know, have no hard feelings in your heart and the Lord will always have me no matter what I might not call her all the time or send a prayer and advice note but I tell her all the time say, me I one of the intercessors I got to raise up for pray for she because I tell her I say, she know your ministry no stop at Jamaica I don't know what going right now but your ministry no stop at Jamaica and I remember we did a live and the Lord did use me for minister to her and say, nations are wait upon her. And so, when you see certain things, show her love. Give her love because she, as much as you see her, she's she rebel and whatever, she have a soft heart. She's like a baby. Yes. But, let me tell you something, when it comes to the things of God, she see us. And she's not them two-faced type of Christian that way. I show you that pretty face here and then behind the closed door. She live what she say. I can tell you that because me there on her, I'm a see that. She live what she say. She's a woman of God and she's a principal woman to stand up on the word of God and she's not in the Dali house thing. So when you come to her, you come to her straight. But I want to know if you just appreciate the work what she do, the fact that she can take time out her day for just pour out and do this, it is not easy. But continue for pray for her. If you don't do nothing, pray for her that's God cocoon her in her presence and keep her so she can continue to do the work of God. Amen? So that's what I want to say. My love and appreciate you. Bad, 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 bad. Thank bad. you so much. I honor that so much. Guys, my not supporters are not fans, but family. Thank you so much Amen. for tuning into Sheena Power Talk Youth Link. Sis, your presence is really, really appreciated. Amen. Thank Amen. you. You're and I so love welcome. You. You're so and welcome. big up on the cell phone. I don't know. I'm not coming with a big up this week, but well, not a bono, but big up everybody in the body of Christ to so just uh, do the thing the right way. And Amen. Just, you know, I reach out to God and I dwell in this season. In this season, we need to hear more from God. So just God bless you and thank you for 1,000 subscribers. You go on. Amen. You go on. Amen. Thank you so, guys. Amen. God bless you.
Wow! Thank you for watching Sheena Power Talk Youth Link. Please remember to subscribe, 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 like, share, and leave a comment. And if you want to donate to this amazing program, you can just look at the information below and contact me. And God bless you. Thank you. As for now, take care of yourselves and your family.